joining us today on the WEX YouTube channel. We're here with Connor McDonald to talk about his work with Nikon and also um, all of his career so far, or at least as much as we can cover. Don't forget, we are live, so you can pop your questions either in the chat um, or in the comments, and we'll ask them as we go. Um, so, hi, Connor. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. No problem at all. Um, do you want to tell us a little bit about who you are um, and maybe do some shameless plugging of, of the websites and the Instagram? <laughs> uh, my name is Connor McDonald. I am an entertainment and wildlife photographer. I'm also a Nikon Europe ambassador. Um, yeah, I mainly work in music, but also have a crazy sort of other half of my job in extreme wildlife, like you're seeing on the, on the screen, like up in the Arctic with polar bears and things like that. Um, my website is connormcdonald.com and my Instagram and all social media is at Connor McDee Photo. If I you like want to check it out. That's a fantastic picture, the one that's just come up on the screen. Um, Thanks. So I know you have sort of two sections to the work that you create. You have um, your sort of more nature and wildlife area, and then you have your entertainment section um, or behind the scenes. Um, so I want to start with your wildlife, because there's obviously a burning question that a lot of people want to know. Um, and that's that you are an ambassador for the WWF. Yeah. Um, and you've also obviously worked quite closely with Attenborough. Yeah. Would you tell us a little there bit? There about... <laughs> Right on cue. That wasn't even planned. <laughs> um, could you tell us a little bit about how all of that came about and, and how you got involved in the WWF to start Yes, with? so I got involved with WWF. Um, I mean, my family has, have always been um, supporters of WWF for as long as I can remember. Actually, growing up in my childhood home, there was a WWF sticker on my bedroom window. Um, but I got involved with them probably about seven years ago, I want to say. Um I went to one of the uh, talk they had on in London. I managed to get a ticket to it. And actually, Sir David Attenborough was hosting the talk. And um, uh, a guy who worked with WWF came up to me and was like, I know who you are. I follow you on Instagram. Like, I'm a, I'm a fan of, of, like, the artists you work for. And, and I you know, that's how I found you. And I love your work. I was like, all right, cool. And he's like, would you be interested in doing some stuff with WWF and like getting involved? And I was like, absolutely. I'd, I'd absolutely love to. So sort of did a few, like, I guess, social media type things with them, which at the time they didn't have that big of a presence on social media, but um, I kind of helped them out with that a little bit. And then uh, after about a couple of months, they asked if I'd be up for becoming an ambassador, which they were like, you know, chances are it probably won't happen because it's got to go through so many different people and things like that but um amazingly it went through everyone and yeah i ended up becoming an ambassador and through them is how i met sir david because he is also uh, an ambassador for the wwf can i ask so um i know it must have been a little bit overwhelming i i myself um have walked past him and i think the <laughs> hour of excellence just sort of um alludes from him but i wondered you've taken a lot of photographs of him and with him and I wondered um, how that felt and how you would go about arranging a shoot like that you know how do you photograph Sir David Attenborough yeah I mean I'm, I'm the same as well like I don't really get nervous around people but around him he's is it's just his presence you know he's he's my he's my hero as well so uh, to get to work with him is an absolute honor but um, I guess how how the shoots come about is it's kind of um, through whatever sort of production he's working on so um for example, when I first started working with them, it was uh, for a series called Our Planet, which was, um, there was an external production. Actually, that was the first shot I took of him on screen right there. Um, it's an external production shot out in multiple different countries, but he flew out to Kenya for it. So I spent um, a week or two with him in Kenya. Um, and that was also with the WWF as well, because they were, it was the, the Our Planet was, was their, basically their idea and their show so um yeah it was kind of a collaboration between wwf and the production company and that's sort of how i got involved with that and uh yeah i guess i sort of just from then on the production companies whenever they um needed a photographer david because he likes having me around and he you know he likes my pictures i'm sort of the the go-to guy for it now at the minute so it's cool very lucky that's really awesome and 
uh, I'm quite enjoying the fact that every time we say his name, he magically appears on the slide. Yeah, I know. It's really weird. It's, to- it's not even planned as well. It's on shuffle, I think. So, uh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, no, that's fantastic. And I guess one of the things that's great about working for the WWF is obviously you get to work um, on saving the planet and climate change and incorporate that into your photography. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, of course, you're also a Nikon ambassador, um, which is very exciting as well. So, do you want to talk to us a little bit about which Nikon cameras you use? Because I know that is the first question everyone will be wanting yeah. to answer. Yeah. Um, so I guess my go-to kit bag, like if I had to have a bag that um, just carried like my normal go-to gear, it would have two D850s. Um, I like to shoot with two cameras. Basically, I don't like, especially with live music, I, I always shoot with two cameras because I, I, I don't like missing a moment. I like having maybe... My, my like go-to lenses if I'm shooting music is probably 2470 2.8. That's my favorite lens. Um, it's just so robust and just covers pretty much everything. And I also have a 7200 on my other camera. They're like the main. If I had to pick two lenses, that they 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 would be the ones. Um, basically, just because I, I if I'm shooting with one and then there's a moment happening on a stage that is maybe a bit further away, I don't want to be wasting time changing lenses. So that's why I shoot with with two cameras. So I literally pop it up and there we go and then straight back to the other lens if I need to um but I also have a, a 14 to 24 I think it is wide angle um that's more for just sort of the big epic crowd shots or if I'm with like that for example um or if I'm with a DJ who I work with a lot called Calvin Harris um if I'm in the booth by him there's not much space between us if I'm stood right behind him so I'll be I'll use that big wide shot I get those nice big epic DJ with the hands up in the air, fireworks going off, the crowd sort of thing. So I guess that's my my go-to kit bag, yeah. Can I ask, so um, obviously camera choices are very particular. A lot of people have a lot of debates about which is the best camera. Why mm-hmm. do you choose Nikon? I love Nikon. Um, I, I'll be honest, I haven't always been a Nikon shooter. Um, and that was purely because when I first started photography, I mean, I didn't really know much about photography, but the first camera I got um, was a different brand, the dark side, as I like to call them. But uh, I started with them and then basically I just started buying lenses and that's the only reason I, I was that. I didn't really know anything different, but I switched to Nikon about four or five years ago. And I think it's just that I've pushed them through the elements of everything and they've just withstood everything I've thrown at them. You know, whether that's like minus 30 something degrees Celsius or high altitude up in like in Nepal or at a concert, um, a festival where it's absolutely bucketing down with rain or I'm getting covered with beer and all sorts. And they just withstand everything that's I've thrown at them so far. And they're just absolute powerhouses. It's really interesting to me that you use the same camera for both your entertainment work and your wildlife work. Yeah. Um, I guess the difference is in the lenses, right? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I mean, I have other lenses as well, but um, yeah, the ones I mentioned before, sort of my go-to. Like when it comes to wildlife, I'd probably use a, a bigger lens. Like I've got a 180 to 400 with the inbuilt teleconverter. That's my favorite wildlife lens. But I still also use my 2470 occasionally. So can I ask, obviously you have the divide in your work and I'm guessing you love both, which is why you have got both featured everywhere and that you continue to shoot both of those things. Mm-hmm. Do you lean towards one more than the other? Um. I don't know. The, I both love them for different reasons. I started in live music. Um, I love music. I love live music. It's it's a massive passion of mine. Um, the fact I get to work with some of these artists is, still blows my mind to this day. Um, and I love that. And I love that I get to travel around with it and get to, you know, I get to experience the life of some of these artists without the pressure they have. I get to stand on stage at like a headline slot at Glastonbury or Coachella or, you know, which not many people can say they have done. So, so that experience is, is mind blowing to me and, and it's incredible. But then also the wildlife, I love the, I love the fact that, you know, nothing's guaranteed there. You know, if, I've, if I'm on stage again, nothing's always, nothing's guaranteed, but you know, you know, there's going to be an artist there, you know, there's going to be lights and there's, a, there's at least going to be a crowd there. Whereas wildlife, you know, I, I really enjoy, um, going off and not really knowing what I'm going to get you know I, I have no control over anything there I have no control over the weather if anything's going to show up it's uh 
yeah, it's it's an interesting one. So in terms of your career path, you started from music and then sort of evolved into wildlife in a later stage of your career. Is that right? Yeah, um, I've always been interested in, in the wildlife, but um, I guess I think as my career sort of developed, I got more chances to go off to these other places and, you know, I had more income to be able to go off and do it. And then eventually that has led to sort of also getting wildlife jobs as well so yeah sort of invested in it and it's sort of paying off a bit now so we have a great question from Kai he's asked basically how did you move from taking photos which we we all sort of do in our free time to making a career out of it and um, you know was it about your social networks was it about um practice and um, you know how did you transform that into a career for you um it's a, it's a tricky one because it wasn't there wasn't like a set thing that happened is when I, when I started, I was basically just shooting with, I'd, I'd apply for press passes at these shows. So I would email like a hundred people a day, different PRs, managers, you know, even, even the band members, actual like MySpace pages. This is how long ago I'm talking like my back in the MySpace days, um, trying to get a press pass, um, for their show. Um, and some, you know, 99% of the time I wouldn't even get a response. And then the 1% of the time I would, and sometimes it'd be no, sometimes it'd be like, oh, maybe, but then occasionally there was a yes. So I started with that and it kind of, you know, I'd, I'd photograph these bands and then they'd like the pictures. And then next time they came around on tour, they, you know, like up for their next album cycle, they would, uh, I would message them and they'd be like, oh, we really liked your pictures last time. Do you want to? shoot the whole show for us this time you know we we'll 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 chuck you a bit of cash and i was like oh cool okay like didn't even expect to get paid for it it was more just a hobby at that time and then again like next time they'd come around again on another tour or say they were doing like a big show in london um i'd you know i'd either reach out to them and be like oh what about the london show or you know like another show and i'll come and do this that looks like the big one and they would be like okay yeah cool and then it's sort of just ended up developing relationships with these artists and with with the bands um and their management or record labels and sort of sort of got my name out there and it, it sort of just spiraled everyone the thing is everyone thinks especially the music industry everyone thinks it's massive but it's actually not everyone knows everyone um so sort of once you have your your foot in the door and you sort of get the gist of who's who it, it you know you sort you're sort of in there i guess um yeah, I hope that answers the question. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no, I think that's really helpful. It definitely showcases how much work you put into it. Um, and I guess yeah, there's a lot of behind the scenes stuff that, especially in the early days, that you know people people just think it's overnight. But it, it yeah, I mean, I've been doing it for 13 years now, so yeah, yeah. slow down there. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess my next question would be about how you take the pictures. So obviously, you know, one of the elements of being a photographer in these areas is that you're good. Um, and as you know, you're very good. So um, <laughs> I wondered when it comes to sort of set up and framing for something like a festival or a gig or a show. So you're on stage, you've got the lights that are coming out as sort of special effects or to, mm -hmm. to the, how do you then work with that for an image? Because I know that can be really difficult when you don't have control over the lights. Yeah, I mean, again, it's sort of, you know, live show, I, I sort of don't really have much control over anything I have no control over what the artist is going to do what the lights are going to be or you know what when the pyro and stuff is going to go off you've got to sort of preempt what what's going to happen I guess um how how would I frame it I mean I I like to get as much diversity in, in a in a show as much as possible but I, I see my job as being sort of I need to take pictures of this show to make people be like whoa I want to go to this show this looks amazing um so that's that's essentially how I see my job with this thing. As it's sort of almost like a salesperson in some in some degree. So say I'm shooting a show. If I have time during the day, if I'm on tour, I'll actually go around the venue because each uh, we're in different venues every every time, and and no one venue is the same. I'll I'll go out, scope out locations, you know, figure out where I can and can't go, find out my the like fastest route from from A to B. Um, and then if there's a sound check, I'll, I'll be sort of going around the, thinking, okay, like preempting where the crowd's going to be and, and things like that. Um, 
so yeah, I do I do sort of plan, but I also I also, I also don't. Um, it's more just I plan how I'm going to get around and where sort of I want to be, and then as as like if a tour's going on, you know, as the tour goes on, it, you sort of get the gist of the show and and sort of can preempt what's going to happen or what the artist is going to do on stage at certain times. So um, yeah, it kind of helps, and also the music is a big indicator of what's going to happen. You know, with with some a lot of songs, you can tell if there's going to be a big drop. Which if it's a big song, you probably know, especially with the with Calvin and, and when he's DJing, you know there's going to be pyro going off, or there's going to be CO two going off, or the crowd's just going to go mad. So you know there's going to be good shots when there's a big drop. Right on cue again. There we go. Um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's that definitely makes sense. And I can see what you mean about, I guess there's a very similar style in terms of both wildlife and music in the fact that you have to scout before you go. So, you know, when yeah. they're at the sound stage and in wildlife, you should always scout before you plan to actually Yeah. Root. Sometimes sometimes there's not the chance to. Um you know, sometimes we we arrive at shows five minutes before they're on stage. Um, so there's not really a chance, but I guess with my relationship with the artists I work with, I sort of can preempt what they're going to do on stage and sort of know roughly what's going to happen, if, if that makes sense. Yeah. We actually have a few questions coming in, which was going to be my next question as well, um, about the difficulty in lighting those situations. So in terms of your camera settings, you're obviously working in low light, I would imagine, a lot of the time. Yeah. Um, could you talk us through how the Nikon performs in that situation and I guess some of the settings you might use for somebody just starting out in that environment. Yeah, I mean, the settings are constantly changing, especially a live show, because you've got lights constantly just going off all over the place. So, you know, sometimes it goes pitch black, sometimes there's one light, sometimes it's, it's so bright or uh, there's a dreaded, dreaded lasers, which you have to avoid and dodge, a bit like Mission Impossible. But um yeah, settings wise, I mean, Nikon cameras perform absolutely incredible in in the dark. It's almost like they can see in the dark, especially D850. It's it's insane. But that's why I like the um, 2417, 7200, and 1424 because they're all 2.8, so it lets in more more light basically and helps me helps me see in the dark a bit better. But um, settings wise, I mean, you still do need quite a fast fast shutter because on stage there's always a lot of movement um and actually the, the lights are pretty bright more often quite a lot of the time um for example that picture there with ellie there's i'm on, on stage looking out at the crowd but there's a spotlight as you can see right in the middle there blaring right down at me so you've got to factor factor stuff like that in um but yeah i guess settings wise yeah fast shutter sometimes slow if, if the artist isn't doing that much on stage but um normally quite a high iso normally about 1600 2000 iso um it's sort of my sort of average range where i normally am sometimes i absolutely push it as far as i can like if up in up in the thousands I, I don't really tend to like to do that but um but the camera can handle it you know if if, if needs be yeah and then I guess this is a, a quite relevant question from that as well, is Brian's asked, do you then manipulate them? Um, I imagine you yeah. do. But... Yeah, I do. I, I try not to do that much um, editing after. I mean, I, I, I play around with the colours and, and uh, contrast and things like that. I never retouch. So I'll never retouch a person or, you know, live music. I'll never... I know some photographers that are like photo, like Photoshop out mic stands or, or you know, even Photoshop lights out and, and things like that. I'd never do that because I want it to be sort of as, as, as real as, as, as it is. Um, I do. Yeah. I, I pop it into Lightroom and play around with, with a few things, but most it's a lot of it is quite, quite minimal. Um, yeah. Not, I don't really do that much post-processing. Is that the same for your wildlife photographs? Yeah, well? wi wildlife, I actually work within the uh, Nat Geo limits. They have a very strict strict guide of what you can and can't do. And 99% of the wildlife stuff I do is I try and stick within within that because, I mean, Nat Geo wildlife photographers are the best in the world, so I want to try and emulate them and see if I can see if I'll one day be able to get within a touching, touching distance of their level. Maybe one day. <laughs> 
Yeah, absolutely. I also love the fact that you don't edit too much because I do think it brings out more of a realness in the images. Um, and your images are fantastic. So I guess when they come out that well, you don't really need to. <laughs> Thanks. Um, Dave's asked a question about whether you would um, be looking at some point to move to the mirrorless family. So he said the Z6, Z7. Yeah. Um, uh, I actually have a Z6 and Z7, um, and I am starting to use them way more uh, than I actually thought I would. Um, the upcoming release, uh, Nikon has supposedly have a Z9 in the works, um, which looks like it's going to be a beast. I don't know anything about it, so don't ask me, but um, it looks like it's going to be amazing. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. But yeah, I use a Z6 and Z7. I use that actually sometimes for wildlife stuff because of the silent shutter. Um, I know the D850 has a silent shutter, but you have to, you can only do that through the, um, through the screen on the back, which I don't really, I don't like using the screen on the back. Um, I prefer looking through the, through the eyepiece, but yeah, I use the Z6 and Z7 when I need to do silent stuff. Um, so yeah, sometimes wildlife, if it's, if it's something that is very skittish or even in a, in a studio, um, I don't know if you just saw that picture of David Attenborough in a, in a vocal booth then that was shot on a Z7 um, because, I mean, the last thing you want when David Attenborough is doing voiceovers or, or you know, someone like Ellie's singing a, a new song in the booth is hearing a shutter go off in the background. Uh, I wouldn't be allowed in, in the studio much longer if that was happening. So uh, I find that very helpful. Do you think you'll be working more on the mirrorless as the future moves forward? I think so, yeah. I think I genuinely think the future is mirrorless. Um, I am I'm, I'm, I'm excited for it, to be honest. So um, I want to go back a little bit to your sort of earlier work um, that you took at the beginning of your career. How did you find, because I imagine there's a lot of travelling, regardless of whether it's music or wildlife, um, obviously your work seems to have taken you all over the world. How do you cope with that constant travel or is it something for you that you just absolutely love? I love it, but I think it's sort of, it's kind of almost all, all I've known. Like my, 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 my only ever sort of, this is sort of my only job I've ever had. I started when I was like 15, 16. So it's, it's kind of all I know, but I, I love traveling. I love going to new places. I love meeting new people. I love trying out new foods in, in, you know, far off countries. Um, yeah, it's it's kind of it's kind of part of it all, I guess. I I I just I just love it. Yeah, I'm just used to it now. I guess um, it's been weird over the last year. I haven't been stuck in one place for so long. Uh, you know, over over the last like 10, 10, 12 years, the most I've stayed in one place is probably about two weeks. So so this has been a big shock to the system. But it's actually been quite nice to sort of chill and, and relax for a little bit. But um, once it gets going again, I, I can't wait. Can I ask, um, so I don't want to make you pick between the two because obviously they're so different and the styles as well are very different. Um, but if you had sort of a favourite shoot or a favourite image from each of those styles, could you tell us about sort of like your best shoots that you've Yeah, um, okay, so I guess my favourite shoot, um, uh, live music, I would probably say it'd be, there's one of Calvin somewhere here where... Um, there's a load of, I mean, I really like that one actually on screen right now, but there's one where he's sort of in, there's loads of flames behind him um, and you can't see the crowd or anything, but I just, I, there's something about it that just looked really dramatic that I really like. I guess my favorite sort of studio one is obviously one of David Attenborough. Um, you'll see it's, it's around somewhere. And I guess actually that elephant one is one of my favorite wildlife photos I've taken as well. But, um, but yeah, I guess, I guess, does that help? Is that is that does that count? Yeah. Am I allowed to pick three? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely not. Uh, <laughs> um, no, that sounds great. And then I know recently you've been playing with the new Nikon camera as well, the Nikon yeah. ZFC. Yeah. Do you want to talk to us a little bit about how you've been finding that? Because it is such a different camera from the other yeah. ones in the Nikon range. Yeah, yeah, I absolutely love it. I think it's it's a really cool camera. I mean, obviously, it, it won't be becoming my main camera, but as a sort of day to day, just having something something there. You know, even if I'm, you know, I like when I when I'm on tour, I like to actually like get out the venues and go wander around and see everything. 
But more often than not, I don't really like taking a camera because it's, you know, walking around with a, a D850 and a 2471. I just sometimes just can't be bothered because, you know, I've, I've got it on me all, all the other time when I'm not, when I'm uh, in the venue or what, whatnot. But um, I love it because it's it's quite discreet. Um, it looks really cool. Um, and I, I think it's it's a, it's a good sort of phone replacement. There's so many pictures I've taken with my phone and I'm like, oh, I wish I had a camera. And I took that on a camera instead of my phone. You know, I wish I had better resolution on it. I wish it would just, you know, look nicer. And I think for me, there's the ZFC is is that perfect. It's basically it's perfect for that, just to have a sort of a day to day go to, you know, on, on my shoulder, point not point and shoot, but you know, like sort of it's there, always there kind of thing. Yeah. Do you think you'll be carrying that around permanently? I know yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. About whether you carry a camera or not I know we've spoken to some people that say no I do it when I'm supposed to and the rest of the time I relax some yeah people, I always have a camera on me I never want to miss anything yeah I mean I normally always have a camera on me so I'd, I'd imagine it will be it'll be there yeah and um, can I ask so you've obviously got a lot of work going on at the moment is there anything at the minute that you're working on that you're really excited about that you want to tell us about yeah so um I'm just about to start working with um, a Formula One team. Um, I'm supposed to have started at the start of this season, but because of COVID uh, and they are in quite a strict bubble with Formula One. But it's sort of the the, the relaxing it with the Durana season, half halfway through the season, there's a, there's a break. So they've just started the break, but towards the second half of the season, hopefully um, they'll relax the rules a bit more so I can, I can jump in and... Uh, and get going but I'm, I'm a massive Formula One fan so um, I'm pretty excited about that. Um, I know as well you've been working on some projects with Nikon just in terms of doing some extra promotions and um, do you think in the future that you'll sort of lean more towards that wildlife area or do you think you're going to start leaning more towards music or are you just going to play them both out until I think so I mean I, I don't really like planning or thinking that far ahead in the future but I, I think I'll always keep my foot in both I think with the music I probably I mean I don't want to be like 40 50 years old touring on a tour bus for six months of the year um I, I think I'll be very over that by then but um I think I'll still keep in with the entertainment side for sure and probably do more studio based stuff or maybe just a few more like on location kind of things but definitely probably will end up doing more wildlife um as I get older I'd imagine probably start leaning more towards that way for sure I mean I can't for for now it's for now I'm keeping it this it's 50 50 so it's a good mix yeah I can't blame you I've seen some of the trips you've taken um, sort of across the world for wildlife and I have to say I'm not a wildlife person but I could definitely see myself wanting <laughs> to visit a couple of those places yeah yeah um, so for anyone who's sort of looking to get into photography do you have any tips or advice that you would give them to start making a career out of this or to progress their work to the next level I think just putting yourself out there um like that's basically what I did when I started I, I just sort of was un- unashamedly put myself out there and would message anyone and anyone to do with the bands or artists that I wanted to photograph. And eventually it's sort of, it's, you know, sort of managed to get ins and, and make little inroads in towards getting towards them. But um, yeah, definitely put yourself out there and also just get, get to know your, your camera. Like it really, really helps pop it in manual mode and figure out what, what things do. I used to sit at home, I had no idea. I've never studied photography. I had, I had no idea. Like the first shoot I have I ever did, I thought automatic mode would, would deal with everything, um, which proved me very wrong, um, especially with a live show with, you know, bright lights and, you know, lots of different things. But um, I think pop it in manual, figure out what does what, be, you know, go go out in the in your garden or your house when it's dark, when it's when it's super bright, sort of suss it out and um yeah just just get to know what what you're working with doesn't have to be the best camera i started with a with a very very basic uh dslr camera and use that for about four years before i even progressed to it like anything you know like a better camera so um doesn't matter what gear you have just just get get to know it do you think as well there's a lot of it 
is to do with community building and networking because over the years we've seen things like Instagram grow and Mm -hmm. um, and there's a lot of platforms now where you can connect with people a little more easily yeah definitely I mean um, you've got to be quite a personable person I think I think you've got to be uh, quite a resilient person as well. The amount of no's and knockbacks you'll get. Uh, I even still get them today. Um, you know, you've just got to take it on the chin and, and be like, okay, you know, but not let it deter you. Because um, if I did that, I wouldn't be doing half the things I'm, I've been able to do or, or do today. Um, so, yeah, I think, you, I think you'd, uh, you do have to be quite a personable person as well, especially if, you, if you're going to end up touring with people because you spend half half your year with these people so if if you're not personal or if they don't like you or get on with you you're not going to last long on a on a tour at all so uh it, um there's no point not being nice you've got to be a nice person if, if, you know everyone knows everyone word gets around fast so uh yeah yeah i i absolutely agree i think being kind is the first piece of advice i give anybody in absolutely. any industry that relies yeah. on people 100 <laughs> percent um, do you think you'll ever exhibit your work? I think so. Um, probably maybe one day at the minute. I don't really have a plan to, but um, I think one day, yeah, I'd like to. I'd like to do it, yeah. Yeah, I think a lot of the pictures of the music shows and the festivals and concerts, they really remind me of those sort of vintage Abbey Road images that you see quite <laughs> a lot in like the Barbican. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, there's so many, there's so many as well that like just people haven't seen as well. Um, like you see, you know, online on my website, it's it's a fraction of, of what there is, but uh, but yeah, yeah, there's more. Do you want to remind everyone where they can check out your work? Yeah, so um, my social, on social media, like Instagram, Twitter, um, it's at Connor McD photo, and that's Connor with one N. And then my website is connormcdonald.com. Perfect. Um, we just have a question coming in, um, but I can see that it's being typed, so um, we'll wait okay. for the No it. worries. If anybody does have any questions, um, pop them in the chat now, um, otherwise we'll have to come back to you in the comments. Um, but whilst we're waiting, one of the things I did want to ask you is, in terms of getting those shots, it's very similar to the one that's there now, how do, you, yeah, how do you capture the smoke of that and the movement so clearly because I know that is like a really difficult thing so this with group. this is it's sort of like um I guess it's like what I was saying before about preempting the moment um it's what I see a lot of a lot of photographers sort of so sometimes you see you see them chasing chasing something that's already happened on stage which it's not going to happen again but this is sort of a moment where I it was towards the end of the last song of Ellie's set and I know she's there with the guitar and I know she likes going a bit crazy at the very end. And that this is literally the last moment of the last song where the drummer's got his hands in the air and he's about to smash down on the cymbals. And I I sort of could tell the way Ellie was on stage. She was about to either jump or, or you know, like spin around or do something. So sort of a preemptive shot, kind of just watching her, waiting for it to happen. And then luckily it did. Um, but yeah, that's that's actually a very old shot. I've not seen that shot in ages, but yeah. <laughs> um, do you have continuous AF on then, I guess? Yes. Uh, so continuous AF, most of the time, 99% of the time when I'm shooting live music um, or wildlife. And then uh, single shot AF if I'm in like a studio or if it's a more sort of, it's quite a still, still moment. Yeah. So our question has come through. Um, I don't know if you're going to answer this one or not, but okay. <laughs> is it true that David Attenborough said your mate Matt was dreamy from Stephen? My mate Matt was dreamy. What? Yeah, I'm not too sure. <laughs> from Stephen, I don't know. I don't know that. I'm trying to think if that's one of my friends, but I can't actually figure it out. I did think maybe somebody was joining that um, is your mate. <laughs> my mate yeah. Matt. I don't know. I'll, pro no. I'll probably get a text at one point after this and be like, oh, you, it was me. I'd be like, oh, okay. Solid no, Stephen, so far. Um, <laughs> um, so I guess my last question for you before we sign off is just um, where do you see yourself going? So are you looking to travel more of the world? Are you looking to do more with climate change? 
you know, I've seen a lot on your Instagram that shows that you are really passionate about moving forward with those. So I just wondered. Um, yeah, I mean, I've definitely, especially within the last year, um, but over the last few years, I've definitely only travelled if it's necessary. Um, you know, it, it's it's hard sort of trying to advocate for, for like, climate change um, when you have to travel a lot. You feel like a hypocrite. But, I mean, I've offset all my carbon emissions for the last six years now, actually seven years. Um, it's something that I felt like I needed to do because just of how much I was traveling. But I, over the next, you know, in the future, I'm only going to travel if it's necessary. You know, back when I started, I would take, you know, I'd be like, okay, I'm going to go to Vegas tomorrow and then back to England the day after and then off to Norway the day after. And it was, it was just silly. Um, so I won't be doing anything like that from now on. But, um, well, for the last uh, year or so, but um, I won't be doing that in the future. Yeah, only only necessary travel um, to try and bring down bring down how much I travel and, and those yeah carbon emissions. That's really cool that you've offset all of your carbon emissions. Um, that must feel really great when you're having to travel. So yeah, I mean it's 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 not you know it's it's not ideal, but it's it's the, it's the best thing I can do um, for now until there's a better option really yeah yeah but i think it's better than some people do so full credit <laughs> thanks <laughs> um, well thank you so much for being here today and thank you for talking to us and um, just a little bit about your work and um, as connor mentioned before you can check out all of his work on his instagram which i've posted in the chat um, or on his website which is also in the chat you can check out all of the nick on gear at workspotovideo.com um, and also you can check out our events program which is on the website um, we feature a lot of events and hopefully we'll be doing some more stuff with Connor in the future. So thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. No problem at all. Um, and I hope everybody has a really good evening. <laughs>